Hello everyone and welcome to my Linnaeus tutorial. In this one video, I'm going to show you how to install and use Linnaeus. So we have a lot to cover, let's get started. The first thing we're going to have to do is install the prerequisite software that Linnaeus runs on. And the first of those is Mozilla Firefox. So if we go to firefox.com, we can download Firefox from there. All right, and after that, we can go to nodejs.org to download Node.js, and the LTS version should work just fine. So let's download that. And then when they're finished, we can run both installers. Okay, so let's run the Firefox installer first, and you can go ahead and uncheck Make Firefox My Default Browser if you don't want it to do that. Okay, when that is finished, we can install Node.js. We can click next, accept the agreement, next. Um, the default directory is fine. You can leave all of that as well. Next and install. Okay, now that the required software has been installed, we can go to Linnaeus.me to download the actual program. All right, now let's run the installer. Okay, this is the license, we can accept that. This screen is just letting us know that Linnaeus requires some prerequisite software, which we've already installed, so we can ignore that. And if you want a desktop shortcut, you can check or uncheck that. Okay, let's install. And there we go. Now we can launch the program if we want, and it should load up here in a second. Okay, let's full screen it here. There we go. So, the first thing to note about Linnaeus is at the top of the screen we have a record count. And that tells us how many records we're currently viewing, in this case 39,255. Now, if you want to make a new card, you can just click the new button and enter some information, in this case uh, a species. Now, Linnaeus features an interesting autocomplete feature, so if you type in a species, and then when you decide what you want, in this case, let's go with, um, uh, what should we do here? Okay, let's, let's do this. Um, so we type that in and we hit enter. That will auto-complete several other fields. That way you can just save time by entering the species and the software figures out the rest for you. Now, if we wanted to submit a new record, we would just enter our data and then click the submit button. And at the top, you can notice that our record count has increased. It's now 256. To edit a record, we have to first change the data. So let's set this to the moon near a giant crater. And once we have that, we just click edit and it will save the data for that particular record. Linnaeus also features latitude and longitude conversion from degrees, minutes, seconds to decimal form. So if we enter, uh, the decimal form, whoops, let's make that a negative, there we go. If we enter the decimal form here and click the convert button, it will automatically convert everything. And it can do it uh, the other direction as well. So let's, uh, let's change this up a little bit. Let's make this uh, south, okay. Let's make this uh, 11, change that. Okay, so we've changed some of that and now if we convert it, it will convert it in the other direction. Um, the important thing to note here is you have to have both latitude and longitude uh, in order to convert. Um, you can't just do one, it requires both. Now, if you want to change what record you're currently looking at, you could use the previous or next buttons, or you could use the hotkeys for those, which are left and right arrow on your keyboard. And if you notice, every time you click left or right arrow, you will move one record in either direction, and at the top you can see the numbers will change, viewing record X of Y. Now there's also hotkeys, so if you hold down Alt while clicking left or right arrow, then you can move in a group of 100, or if you hold Control, you'll move in a group of 1000. That way it's really easy to navigate your database. Okay, to delete a record from the database, you just click the delete button, and that will automatically delete it and update your record count. To search the database, let's open that up and scroll down. Now, the left columns represent what fields we want to search for, and the right represent what values we want to find in those fields. So, 
let's say we want to search for this particular species and we find two records in the database. Now at the top, you'll notice that our record count is changed. And that's because if your search is successful, the program will return only your search results. Okay, let's try searching for something else this time. Uh, how about country? Let's do that. And let's do a search for records with the country of Honduras. 295 records found, we scroll up, and we notice that the record count shows 295 records. Cool. Another very useful feature of Linnaeus is the ability to mass edit your database. So let's say we misspelled the country Germany in our database, and we want to correct that. But instead of doing it manually for every incorrect spelling, we want to automate the process. So what we'll do is set the country to Germany, and this is the correct spelling, this is what we want to change it to, where the country is Germany but the misspelled version. Now, if we go ahead and submit these changes, we will get a result, and it tells us that 34 records were changed. So this way you don't have to manually edit all of the records, it will just do it for you. But uh, be really careful because it's very easy to accidentally mess something up and ruin a lot of your database. Another thing to note is that when we finish the mass edit, it will return only the edited records. In this case, there were 34, so at the top, it says we're viewing 34 records. Okay, now let's look at the options menu. We have some different color themes you can set depending on your preference. We also have a database backup. This will create a folder on your desktop named Linnaeus Backup, and it will have a copy of your database. So let's see if it worked. Okay, there's the folder, and inside is the database.db file, and that is your database file, but it's a copy of it. So let's say you accidentally did something and ruined your database. If you backed it up before, all you'd have to do is click the Open Database Folder button, and this will show you your actual database. So on the top right, we have our real database with the errors, and on the left, we have the saved, backed up database. And all we do is drag the good database into the incorrect databases folder, overwrite it, and that is how to restore your database in case of uh, an error or corruption. Another really useful feature of Linnaeus is the ability to create specimen cards. You can do that by pressing F1, and that will create a card based upon whatever record you're currently looking at. You can scroll through them all. Um, you can also delete them by left-clicking them, and you can edit the card by right-clicking it. Then you can change any data that you wish, and to finish editing, simply right-click the card, and it will save it just like that. Okay, let's clear the print queue to get rid of all the cards. Perfect. If you want to print your specimen cards, you can go to the top right corner, open the menu, go to print. From here, let's go to page setup. And in the user guide, there's a section on print settings. Um, they're probably the same as this video, so you can take my settings as a default. You'll probably have to change a couple things like the margins and so forth, but copy these over to your print settings and it should give you a good place to start. A really useful feature of Linnaeus is the ability to share data between different people. So let's say someone wanted certain records from my database, but I didn't want to send them the entire thing. Well, I can do that. And first, I need to find only the records I want to export. So in this case, let's do a search and let's, uh, let's search for records that are from the country of Honduras. Okay. Let's do that. Cool. So 295 records were found. The way the export feature works is that it will export however many records you're currently looking at. In this case, it's going to export 295. So let's click the export button. Okay, they have been exported. To find the exported data, we're going to click the open files folder and the exported data is going to be named exporteddata.csv. It is a spreadsheet file. And that is the file that you'd send to someone if they wanted your data.
Now let's approach it from the other perspective and assume that someone sent us the data. What we would need to do is place the data that we received from them into this folder and make sure it's called exporteddata.csv. Once we do that, we can go and click the import button and it will tell us that the records were imported and if we scroll to the top, we'll see that our record count is now double what it was because the records were successfully added to what we had before. So using the import and export system, you can easily share data between different people. One of the strongest features of Linnaeus is the data manipulation tool. What this does is it allows you to format your data for insertion into a scientific paper like a monograph or something similar. So the first step is to figure out what data you want to format. And the way the data manipulation tool works is that it reads the data from not your database, but from the exported data.csv file that we made earlier. So we already have that file so we can proceed, but if you were going to do this yourself, you'd first need to search and then export the specific records that you want to work with. Once those are exported, then you can use the data manipulation tool. Now that that is out of the way, we can figure out how to use this. And essentially, you pick the fields that you want to list in the specific order you want with any punctuation that you might need. So let's do specimen first, and then uh, how about species, and then Let's put the coordinates in uh, parentheses, and the coordinates are the GPS coordinates. Okay, and now let's enter the uh, current collection. There we go. And let's put that in brackets. And let's finish it off with a semicolon. So this is going to be the format that every record will take from our exported data.csv file. And if we click generate, there we go. It tells us that the files were saved in a file named formatteddata.html. At the bottom of the page, it gives us a preview of what the data is going to look like. If we click open the files folder, we can find the formatteddata.html and open it up. And there is all of our data formatted exactly as we wanted. Now we'll copy and paste it into a text editor. There we go. And that is all of our data ready and waiting for us so we don't have to type all of it out manually. If you wanted it on a single line each, you could do a search for whatever your end of line character is, in this case a semicolon, and then Start a new line after every semicolon and all your data is on a single line. Now the data manipulation tool also has some options. We can set the coordinates as decimal instead of degrees, minutes, and seconds. And a really useful feature is the truncate duplicates option. And what it does is this. If a record shares data with the previous record, it will not display it. In other words, it will only display data from a record if that data is different from the previous record. One thing you'll need to watch out for is that if a field has no data, it will simply be empty. But if that field is surrounded by parentheses or brackets or something, they'll still show up. So you'll just have to open that up in a text editor and do a find and replace to delete all of those empty parentheses and brackets. Last but not least is the user guide, and if we click that button, it will open it up for us, and this will contain a great deal of information that may answer any remaining questions you have. It also gives examples on how to use various features of the program. That sums up my Linnaeus tutorial. I hope you found it helpful. Take care.